Well, Carmel Cipolloni has just returned from a five-day, 50-person mission to the Pacific, and it was the first big trip taken in her capacity as Deputy Prime Minister and Associate Foreign Affairs Minister for the Pacific. It's a big deal for her and for us all strategically as a country. So welcome to the programme, Deputy Prime Minister. Kia ora. Um, I want to talk to you in detail this morning about the heightened strategic competition in the Pacific. Those are your words. Um, that's how you described it. Uh, you've just been to two of the hottest spots actually, Fiji and the Solomon Islands. Um, and it's fair to say China is competing fiercely to be the main strategic partner in those places. And it is having some success, which is a stunning reversal of decades of diplomatic relations with those countries, isn't it? Well, look, all of our Pacific nations and neighbours are, are sovereign nations, so they can have relationships, of course, uh, with whoever they choose to mm. uh, in terms of partnerships with other countries. Uh, we are one of the partners, and, and I consider New Zealand to be one of the key partners. We were in there over the course of the week to reconnect, because we haven't had a chance to, to the extent that we would otherwise because of the pandemic, uh, and to to just strengthen the relationship that we have as a country in the region. Well, the pandemic hasn't helped China back. It is strengthening its relationships, particularly with the Solomon Islands. And Penny Wong, your counterpart in Australia, called the security deal there one of the greatest fa failures in foreign policy in the history of the region. Mm. You agree? Well, I think we've got a very strong relationship in the region, and that certainly was how we felt when we were uh, welcomed by all of the Pacific countries. But there that security real... pact, that security pact was a major failure, wasn't it, of diplomacy in oh, the region look, by our country and Australia? I wouldn't Australia. necessarily say that. I, we were there to build on the depth and breadth of our relationship, uh, and that certainly came through. Uh, from the leaders that we spoke to and also the delegation that we took. It's not just about the way in which politicians engage. It is about the Pacific diaspora that we have here and the strength of relationship between them and our Pacific nations as well. Dovata, family. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely. The, that, but that is a strategy. Well, that's, it's, it's that's not, your strategy. It's, it's not only a strategy, it's actually how it is. I mean, I'm Deputy Prime Minister and now Associate Foreign Affairs Minister with a responsibility for the Pacific region. Uh, and yes, actually, I am family with the Pacific because of my Samoan and Tongan connections. Mm. There is a depth to the relationship that Aotearoa has with Pacific nations. Uh, that is very hard for other countries to match because of our history and our whakapapa and our cultural connection. And that's why we're trying to capitalise on it as a uh, diplomatic strategy in the Pacific. It, it is who we are. And so well, it's, it's, it's helpful. It's, uh, you know, it's helpful. But it is, it is it's a, a point of difference. It is certainly a point of difference uh, with strategy. regards to our connection to the Pacific. OK, so in terms of China's strategy in the Pacific, did you see the $80 million stadium being built in Honi? a gift from Beijing? Uh, so they are supporting uh, with the um, Pacific Games that are coming up in November. It's not the first time. And uh, there's a long history of China supporting with infrastructure across the Pacific. Again, uh, those are the choices of sovereign nations. Mm. And so that, that is not for New Zealand to get involved in because those are not our decisions to take or make. Sure, but um, their strategy is um, offering free money. But as the Australians say, as the British say, your counterparts in other uh, countries, there are strings attached. Aren't they, Minister? Look, we were there to make announcements on funding. We were investing into the Pacific. And so conversations with Pacific leaders about other countries' investments was not something that was on the table. I think we were there to talk climate change. We were there to talk education and, and youth investments. Uh, we were there to talk labour mobility. And to be fair, uh, Rebecca, and this is the complete um, honest truth of the matter, mm. um, climate change, economic sustainability, labour mobility, those were the subjects that we traversed more than anything else. Did you talk about China? Uh, we didn't talk about China, actually, to be honest. I don't think we did. AUKUS did come up. OK, um, we, I want to talk to you about that too yeah. in a second. But um, specifically about China, no, I don't think that was actually discussed. That's the truth. At all? 
No, as I said, climate change was the number one thing. Economic development, labour mobility. Yes, I have those All points. of those things. But it is an elephant in the room out there, isn't it? And what is China's um, strategy in the Pacific exactly? Well, I'm not going to speak for China's strategy. You can see it, though, and you're countering it with well, uh, we our foreign that, affairs policy. Um, the, the geopolitical or geostrategic competition in the region is real. Um, that, you know, we have our relationship. We are not there to dictate to Pacific countries who they can have partnerships with. Mm -hmm. We just need to make sure that our relationship is strong. Well, China's... We, it is, this is happening on our back doorstep. We have the world's superpowers lining up. It is one of the hottest regions at the moment, and that is evidenced by the UK, uh, the US, Australia, ourselves, you know, beating a path down to the Pacific, particularly since that um, security arrangement was put in place. And that is because um, China sees the Pacific as key to its retaking of Taiwan, doesn't it? It's big and it's important what is going on down there and it involves us. I, I can't say this enough, Rebecca. It wasn't a discussion that was had over the course of the week when I was with Pacific But you countries. would have been briefed on this. We this did is something that you about, would have knowledge of. We did talk about uh, the other partners in the region. I think uh, the US, Australia, uh, the UK having more of a presence is, is welcomed. Um, you know, we are all about working together to make sure that our Pacific region mm -hmm. is safe, it's secure, that we are working coherently together because of the shared challenges like climate change that we face. Uh, and so, you know, those were the discussions that we had. But these must also be front of mind for you as Deputy Prime Minister and your role in foreign affairs when you look at the Pacific and you see down there uh, China doing security deals because feasibly any naval base. It wants a naval foothold down there, that is clear. Yeah. But any naval base or security down there in the Pacific, this yeah. is a going concern to New Zealand well, too, Rebecca, could be used as deterrence with retaking Taiwan. As I said, you know, there, there are... you not are, considering these things? Oh, look, as I said, there is the pre uh, presence of a number of people operating in the Pacific. We're very aware of the geostrategic competition. However, our focus has to be on our contribution to the region, the way that we are working with our neighbours, and that was what I was there to reinforce. Uh, I have to say, the way we were, were received was incredibly humbling. It was a reminder to me as Deputy Leader and as a Foreign Affairs Associate Minister um, that we do have strong relationships, that there is a long history here, and um, that was the primary consideration for us being there. Certainly, but why don't you want to talk about this? Is it because you don't want to upset China? Uh, it's because... You know, as, as a journalist, you are uh, putting to me that this is the primary consideration. No, it's a I'm consideration. Talking, well, I'm talking about the issues that were raised as primary considerations. And so I've just done five days in the Pacific. <laughs> sure. But I'm actually and talking quite to you. keen to talk about the issues that were raised by the leaders that were of importance. Certainly, but I'm talking to you actually about the massive uh, macro issue that is looming yeah. over our region. Mm. It is a going concern for our country, it is a going concern for our partners. Mm. And I'm I'm saying, why won't you talk about that? I am talking about it. Um, I guess, theory, theory. Well, I, I'm, t I'm talking about it uh, in, in the ways that I'm quite comfortable talking about it. So, and, and in terms of so what, I, what our trip meant when we were over there, but Rebecca. what's uncomfortable about it? Well, I think what I'm saying is fear that every Pacific country has the right to form relationships with who they would like to. We just want to be key in, in the relationships that they have. Um, also, you know, keep in mind, we have a very important relationship with China, just yes. like other Pacific countries do. Uh, ours is long-standing. I think we've got 50 years of trade under our belts with China. Um, and so, you know, it's all important to recognise that it's not just the smaller Pacific Island states that may have a relationship with China. We do too. We are a global... We are working globally here. So um, we don't want to upset them by aligning ourselves too closely or critiquing their, the, what, what they're up to in the Pacific. That's not what I said, Rebecca. Well, I'm asking you. Oh, well, as I said, um, I'm speaking to what was important to us on the mission uh, and what was important to us was Aotearoa's reconnection with the Pacific. Um, it's not other people's relationships. We have to make sure that our relationship is strong. What, how far ahead are you thinking? We know that China thinks 50 to 100 years ahead. How far ahead are we thinking with our strategy in the Pacific? Um, you know, we're always looking at the how are things now. Um, we don't necessarily have a 50 to 100 year plan ahead. Um, it is really... 
uh, I think, you know, we pretty much go three, four years at a time with any strategy that we put in place. Does that hold us back? Because that's, that's a very short-term thinking, isn't it? Well, we're very much focused on the now. Um, when we think of things like climate change, then of course we're thinking much further ahead. Um, but we have to be acting quickly, so we can't be thinking about measures that we're going to put in place five years or ten years from now. Uh, we need to be looking at what is possible right now because of the urgency of the issue. So you mentioned before AUKUS came up. I'm keen to hear about that. How did mm. it come up? Uh, it came up mostly because the media were asking us about it. It was quite interesting because at the meetings with leaders, we were very cognizant of the fact that uh, some of the things that we were discussing probably wouldn't be the things that we were asked about. And so sure enough, um, we were all asked for our position on AUKUS. Um, I was really clear, and I think the other leaders too were, you know, that again, that geostrategic competition, um, but also that Australia and, and the UK and uh, the US are trusted partners. Mm -hmm. I think that um, there were probably a little bit of nervousness whenever the word nuclear gets mentioned yes. um, by some of our leaders, but certainly at least uh, the uh, Tongan Prime Minister was talking about a level of comfort with what has been discussed to date. OK, so if we joined AUKUS, that would probably be a major sticking point for the Pacific, wouldn't it, because of that nuclear, uh, Pacific Nuclear Free Treaty of 1986. Wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't that push... Would the Pacific think we weren't listening to them? Well, I th I've, I've taken a look at the, the Rarotonga Treaty, uh, and I think the thing to note there is there's nothing about nuclear propulsion. Mm -hmm. uh, it is about the manufacturing, the testing, the carrying of nuclear weapons. And so that's very different from nuclear propelled submarines. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is important to actually look what uh, look at what is within scope. Mm. Um, we, of course, as a country, uh, still have our nuclear-free zone, mm -hmm. and so we don't allow uh, even nuclear-propelled uh, submarines into our waters, but many are already uh, moving about the Pacific, and it's uh, totally reliant on the, the individual view and decision-making of the sovereign nations. So it sounds like you've found a sort of workaround that if we it's got into AUKUS, no, no. we could take the Pacific with us. It's not a workaround, um, Rebecca. I was trying to understand uh, what we've signed up to here, and I think it's important that we do or, read the detail of yes, that. Yes, but it's not, that doesn't prohibit us uh, signing up to AUKUS, for example, the nuclear issue, is what you're um, saying. I think that we've ruled out, of course, the Tier 1 involvement, um, which uh, includes the the nuclear, mm -hmm. um, the, the nuclear issue. Um, no consideration at this stage or decisions have been taken on whether we, we join at another level, um, you know, perhaps the, the information sharing tier or um, capacity building tier. We actually haven't had those discussions. Military capability building yeah. tier. Um, well, they, they, those discussions will undoubtedly come up with uh, our Prime Minister Chris Hipkins uh, in Australia this weekend. If we had to choose, you know, I'm coming back, I'm wrapping this up into our geostrategic, you know, heightened geostrategic sure. competition. If we had to choose, New Zealand would go with uh, Australia, the UK and the US, wouldn't we? It is very difficult to see us lining up with China and the Solomon Islands. But is the plan <laughs> to take the Pacific with us into AUKUS? Uh, we have no plan for AUKUS at this point in time, and so it would be premature of me to speak to that. But we're um, to open to extent. it, aren't we? Um, I, I look, I'm not the Defence Minister, and I haven't been engaged in any of those conversations to that extent, so it would be uh, wrong for me to even speak to that. What we want to do is make sure, as I've said earlier, that our relationship is the strongest that it can be in the Pacific region with our Pacific partners. We have shared challenges. We have to be working together and absolutely in collaboration in response to those, uh, and that was what the mission was about, and that is the focus of our relationship for what is our priority region, which is the Pacific region. A really quick one for you, because I'm, we've run out of time, but could part of that coll collaboration um, with the Pacific also be a collaboration with China down there? Oh, look, we have different relationships with uh, China, including our trade relationship. But in the we've Pacific, got, could we collaborate with them down well, there? We've got, I'm not sure whether we've got any particular development projects that we're working on with China, um, but I do know that we're working with uh, Japan, the US, I think, uh, Australia, on, 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 on our traditional in, allies in, in Papua New Guinea. And yeah. so, um, you know, I don't know whether there's actual development programs where we're in partnership with China uh, supporting the Pacific. There, there may be, I'm not sure. OK, well, you're open to AUKUS and you're open to working with China in the Pacific. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and joining us Thank this you, morning, um, Deputy Prime Minister Kamal Sepaloni. Thank you.